Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic in conservative dentistry is tooth resorption. It is a process by which all or part of a tooth structure is lost due to activation of the body's innate capacity to remove the mineralized tissue, which is mediated by cells such as osteoclast or odontoclast. So, a part of tooth is lost. Okay. So, this is a tooth and a part of a tooth root or crown. So, any part it can be. So, lost due to the action of odontoclast or osteoclast. So, this will be related to bone. So, it can be two types. One is physiological and next one is pathological. So, physiological uh, tooth resorption all of us know very well. That is the tooth eruption. So, the deciduous teeth will be resorbed once the permanent tooth. So, you know, this is a deciduous tooth and its root. So, once the permanent tooth is getting erupted so this root will be automatically resorbed and this will be exfoliated so this will come to this position that is physiological resorption whereas the resorption which is happening within the permanent tooth that is pathological so what are the causes of tooth resorption the one is periapical infection that is uh, periodontitis apical periodontitis is the most cause of tooth resorption but the effect is usually uh, slight uh, next could be the impacted teeth this results into pressing on the root of adjacent tooth because we know if there is a impacted tooth and we have a tooth here so this will create pressure here and there will be resorption next is the neoplasm uh, it usually slow growing tumors like ameloblastoma giant cell tumors which results into resorption of the related teeth and surrounding bone then mechanical stimulation uh, for example excessive force in orthodontic treatment due to pressure chemical irritants like 30 percent hydrogen peroxide which can result into tooth resorption and also idiopathic resorption which uh, the cause is basically unknown so another classification is internal resorption and external resorption okay so this we can say internal resorption which is happening within the tooth external which is coming from outside the tooth so the site of tooth where resorption occurs here it is within the tooth that is internal uh, so it is mostly starts with the uh, problem with the pulp and external is resorption takes place on the surface of the root near apex that is mainly due to the problem of periapical issues or this one the impacted tooth which is coming from outside okay so that is external tooth resorption so in internal tooth resorption where the dentine and pulpal walls begin to resorb centrally within the root canal so this is a root canal we have a root canal here so pulp root canal so it's a pulp chamber okay so root canal so the dentine and pulpal walls begin to resorb centrally within the root canal so this can be idiopathic but it is usually secondary to pulpitis so mostly the pulpal infection which ultimately leads to the internal resorption so internal resorption will result in a peculiar appearance because this uh, tends to be localized and usually affects the incisors teeth and a rounded pink area appears where the vascular pulp has become visible through the attenuated heart tissue so which is known as pink tooth of mummery this is this peculiar appearance is known as pink tooth of 
so this is because uh, the vascular pulp has become visible through the heart tissue okay it is usually asymptomatic may be detected by chance on routine radiographs so uh, radiographic appearance of internal resorption the canal shows enlarged area margins of the lesions are sharp smooth and clearly defined so the resorption will have a very clear border okay so very clear border sharp border and walls of the root canals uh, system balloon out so it can begin with the clinical crown area that is typically enlarged and varies in size and location okay so this is a clinical crown so clinically the presence of a pink spot in the coronal dentin is due to the presence of granulation tissue just under the enamel so a pulp test uh, is likely to be positive because the pulp uh, remains partially vital because only one part of the pulp has become uh, resorbed the other part is still vital so pulp test will definitely give a positive result so next one is uh, external resorption so external resorption refers to an attack on the roots external edges slowly dissolving and weakening of the tooth base and eventually the tooth will also weaken and uh, resorption will happen so external uh, root resorption can be localized or generalized with the major cause being impaction okay so this is uh, as i mentioned it's a major cause and sometimes the cause would be idiopathic so it affects the surface of the root near the apex of the apex or the crown in case of an impacted tooth so mostly it affects sometimes the crown sometimes the root times both so in radiographic features uh, the apex softened uh, flattened or in square shape the foramen is at apex and opening can be seen margins of the lesions are ragged and irregular because it will not be very clearly defined like internal resorption that will be ragged and irregular so variation in density due to uh, varying uh, rates of resorption and repair occurs on any external surface of the root so external root resorption is associated with an infected pulp so there will be a negative response to pulp sensitive test so one more category we have that is inflammatory root resorption okay so inflammatory root resorption uh, that is uh, the necrotic infected pulp provides a stimulus for periodontal inflammation so the most common cause is trauma so if the cementum has been damaged leaving the dentinal tubules exposed there is an open communication between the internal and external surface of the root so bacteria and the by products diffuse through the dentinal tubules and stimulate an inflammatory response so that is inflammatory root resorption so basically the symptoms of tooth resorption mostly it will be asymptomatic sometimes there will be dull ache discoloration bad breath uh, so loosening of the damaged tooth also can be seen in some of the cases so mainly the complication of tooth resorption the first one is ankylosis that is a main problem that is a periodontal ligament will be destroyed and there will be fusion of the root and bone direct fusion so it is due to the excessive deposition of tissue uh, during repair in the resting stages of resorption so the ankylosis uh, basically can be diagnosed by lack of mobility of the tooth and solid sound on percussion so there will be very solid sound when we do percussion so compared to the dull cushion sound on the normal because it doesn't have a periodontal ligament or periodontal space okay so if periodontal space is there there will be a cushioned sound that is a dull sound we can uh, normal 
listen normally but if it is not there and the bone and tooth is joint or fused so we will get a uh, solid sound okay so how do we manage this tooth resorption the first one is removal of the stimulant factor so like pressure or infection so such thing should be removed if it is impacted tooth it should be removed if it is a tumor or any other thing then we know we need to go for pulpectomy uh, or we can uh, apply calcium hydroxide for 6 to 24 months uh, as an intracanal medication uh, because uh, it has a good effect that is antibacterial effect in the root canal and it increases the pH of dentin so thereby inhibits activity of osteoclast and acid hydrolysis so in summary identification of the stimulant factor is useful in order to render proper treatment by removing the etiological factor okay so it is uh, internal resorption is uh, commonly asked short note pink tooth also commonly asked so if it is asked as a short essay can write about the physiological pathological internal and external resorption and its features its diagnosis and little bit about the treatment so i'll come up with a new topic in conservative dentistry thank you